Hey everybody, welcome back. We are in day 21 of our 30 day EKG challenge and we're diving into monomorphic VTAC. Uh, disclaimer, we're going to be going over two monomorphic VTAC EKGs over the next two days, so one today and one tomorrow. And the reason why I did that is because not every monomorphic VTAC is created equal. And so I think getting a couple of reps in during this 30 day challenge is probably the most beneficial because there are plenty of features that help diagnose VTAC on EKG that they're not all just going to be on one EKG. So I tried to pick two from my EKG vault that would best display um, when combined together. So what is VTAC? Well, it's a tachycardia of ventricular origin, right? So we've done a lot of atrial arrhythmias, and this is going to be one of ventricular uh, origin. So when I scan through here, first thing I notice is that maybe we'll choose V1. When I scan through this EKG, there's a couple of things that I want you to notice. One, we have a regularly occurring rhythm, and it's happening fast, very regular. And notice that the QRS complexes are extremely wide. They're extremely wide. So this is a wide complex tachycardia, right? And this is occurring at a pretty quick rate. Let's take a look at a QRS that lands on a solid line, maybe like this one. The rate is 300, 150. This will be 100, so somewhere between 100 to 150. We'll call this 130 beats per minute. So we have a wide complex tachycardia at 130 beats per minute. Our job is to determine, is this VTAC, like we're looking at here, or is this versus SVT with aberrancy? Right? The reason why we have to have an approach to EKG is because you have to be able to rule in or rule things out. So VTAC or a supraventricular tachycardia like AV nodal reentry, AV reentry, atrial flutter, anything of supraventricular origin that is conducting with a bundle branch block morphology. Because right? remember, bundle branch blocks will create a wide complex QRS. And so let's work through this. So first thing I want to do is I just want to teach you about monomorphic VTAC. What is it? Well, there's a reentry pathway within the ventricles. This is most commonly caused by some type of myocardial scarring, right? So say somebody has an inferior MI. So this is dead myocardium. This is the scar tissue for someone that has had an ischemic event to their myocardium. And so what can happen sometimes is signals that go down into the ventricle and depolarize the ventricle. These signals can come through. And what can happen is these signals, once they enter the scarred myocardium, there's something about this myocardium that is dysfunctional. And it takes a little bit longer for the signal to make its way through that scarred myocardium. And by the time it's come out the other side, what's actually happened is it's able to now re-enter back into the ventricles and then come back down and do this. Back slowly, slowly, slowly. And so you end up getting this rapid re-entry pathway within the ventricles. And this causes a wide complex rhythm, right? So this re-entry pathway is going to create a wide QRS, right? Because what's happening? We're getting ventricular depolarization with every re-entry pathway that is not occurring via the Hisperkinji fibers that are those rapidly connecting fibers. So we get a wide complex rhythm. It's going to be very fast. I'm just going to do up arrows for fast. And it's going to have the same morphology every time because the pathway, if you notice, is pretty much the same. So we would call this mono or one morphic or shape, right? Just like morphology, monomorphic. And so that's what happens in monomorphic VTAC. You get these wide complex rhythms that occur at a very rapid but predictable rate because that reentry pathway is steady within the ventricles. So that's monomorphic VTAC. So we said we can have a wide complex rhythm that's fast. We're going to look for things that help us uh, really narrow down the diagnosis. So the one thing I'm going to do is we're going to calculate the QRS axis. So I'm going to look at my QRS axis. And I'm going to look for an extreme axis. So look here. Notice that in this rhythm, in leads 2, 3, and AVF, my QRS is negative. That's a negatively deflected QRS complex. It looks crazy because this is such a wide complex rhythm. 
But notice that the QRSs are all going down in these three leads. In 2, 3, and AVF, if I come to my coronal plane, are oriented, 2, 3, and AVF are oriented within the inferior portion of the inferior views. So if I have negative QRSs in my inferior leads, that tells me that the vector of depolarization within my ventricles is going from inferior to superior. Look at the direction of ventricular activation. That is not very indicative of AV conduction, right? If this signal was coming from the AV node, it would be typically not such an extreme axis. So look for an extreme axis if you suspect VTAC. So we have an extreme axis here. What I also want you to look for is something called concordance in the precordial leads. So precordial concordance. Usually, my precordial leads, which are leads V1 through V6, usually there's nice something called R wave progression, where we have little R waves in V1 that progress to big R waves in V6. Because remember, usually within the myocardium here, this is my transverse plane with my V leads. You can see V1 through V6 here. Usually my vector of depolarization within the ventricles, if it's coming from my AV node, is kind of headed in this direction, right? So I have little R wave forces in V1 that grow and grow and grow as we head towards the lateral leads because my left ventricle is really pulling those forces that way. But notice here in this EKG, they're all just positive. So we would say this is positive concordance because all of the QRS complexes in my precordial leads are positive. So this would be positive precordial concordance. Anything that's positive or negative concordance tells me that this signal might not be coming from the AV node, right? Because we can predict how things should progress within the precordial leads. So any concordance in those leads is highly indicative of VTAC. And then the last thing that I want you to, to remember, this is a really big one for this lecture, is the concept of AV dissociation. AV dissociation is almost 100% specific for VTAC. And this AV dissociation occurs because we've got this reentry pathway within our ventricles that we've explained, right? We've got this reentry pathway. And this is causing rapid ventricular depolarization. And so our atrial depolarization, right, within the atria, is either going to happen via sinus beats that are just occurring. And what would happen if we had sinus beats that were occurring in the setting of VTAC? Well, they're going to get blocked right here. There's going to be a big blockade because that ventricular reentry signal is happening so fast that none of these atrial signals are going to make their way down. So we're going to have atrial P waves that are doing that, or you're going to have ventricular signals that are actually conducting retrograde through my AV node and occasionally sending retrograde P waves up into the atria. Regardless, they're both of those are going to produce something called AV dissociation. And AV dissociation is going to be something where you see the ventricular rate is greater than the atrial rate. That's what AV dissociation means. That means we're going to have QRSs that are occurring at a more rapid pace than atrial P waves. So I want to scan through and look for any atrial P waves, and that's kind of hard. But what you can notice is you'll see these little bite-sized uh, atrial activities within my QRS complexes, usually on the ST and T waves. So if you look here, notice that we've kind of got these broad T waves. And then look at this one. This one kind of has this little sharp guy that's sitting right there. That's probably some atrial signal. If I scan through, I can see another little hump. That's not present in the previous ones. So that looks like atrial signal. And so you can scan through and look for those things. Yeah, here's one right here. And so look how rare they are. There was one here, there was one here, there's one here. So you can, you can tell pretty quickly that my atrial rate is less than that of my ventricular rate. So that tells me that the AV dissociation, which means that my ventricular conduction is uh, dominating this rhythm. And so AV dissociation, if you see it, that's the gold standard for VTAC on the EKG. So big takeaways from this video. 
a lot to unpack with VTAC. We're going to get another rep on VTAC tomorrow. The big thing is understanding that there is a reentry pathway within the ventricles that is creating a monomorphic wide complex QRS that's occurring rapidly. And it's creating these changes that cannot be explained by normal AV conduction because there is no AV conduction. So I hope this helps. Um, I hope you start to develop a little bit of approach to ventricular tachycardia, how to rule it in and how to rule it out. We'll get another rep tomorrow, and then we'll ideally you can follow the page for a long time, and you'll get more and more reps as time goes on. So hope this helps. If you have any questions, throw them down into the comments. And if not, I hope you enjoy a great rest of your day. Take care. Thanks for watching.